Hello, everyone. Um, today, we're going to be going over some items that um, small business owners encounter during this time of year. Um, the title of our presentation today is Tax Season Readiness for Your Small Business. It's going to be presented by myself, Andrew Gonzalez, and um, Lupe Barraza. Um, I'm a certified QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. I'm the owner of Gonzalez & Company Bookkeeping Services and a Finance Committee member of the Greater North Texas Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Um, Lupe is a, a CPA and a certified tax coach, and we're going to go on and talk to you about some of the things you're encountering, uh, including some important deadlines that are coming up. Uh, some important deadlines that um, we currently are uh, facing as small business owners um, are the W-2 filing deadlines. Um, your 2021 W-2 em employee copies um, are due by January 31st, 2022. Now, if you have um, an outsourced payroll company, typically they do this for you, um, but you, you'll you wanna check with them to see if they've sent those out or if you have to take action in order to get those completed. Um, it is very important you do meet these deadlines. You must furnish copies B, C, um, and 2 of Form W-2 to your employees by January 31st, um, 2022. Um, if you have subcontractors or if you have um, paid um, any account or accountants, any CPAs, um, lawyers, you have to send out a 1099 and those deadlines, uh, the recipients are due to the recipients by January 31st, 2022 um, as well. Um, the um, IRS copy and form 1099 miscellaneous uh, does have a, a different due date of uh, February 28th. That's if you file on paper or March 31st, 2022, 20, uh, if you file electronically. Uh, any paper submissions do have to include the form 1096. So just make sure if you're doing those on your own that you have um, that, that information or they have that form completed as well. Um, and then the big date for tax filing for most small businesses, uh, which includes sole proprietorships, household employees, and corporations, business taxes are due this year um, April, on April 18th, 2022. For S corporations and partnerships, business taxes are always due uh, typically a month earlier, so that would put that date at March 15th, 2022. So right now, I'm sure um, those of you that are joining us or watching um, are concerned or have are facing these challenges as well and these feelings. Um, maybe you're feeling unprepared um, at this point in time if you um, haven't been keeping up with your bookkeeping or if you're feeling overwhelmed, you think that you don't have time to complete these deadlines. Um, and a lot of times business owners just don't have it's the lack of knowledge and expertise in the area um, so as a business owner you're uh, the expert in your industry in your business um, and that's why we're here we're here today to kind of um, help you um, understand and know that there are resources out there available for you where you can learn um, you know what needs to be done um, when deadlines are um, when you need to consult with an expert there are a lot of things you can do on your own but it, there's definitely a time when you have to make a decision when to speak with an expert um, about these items um, don't ever feel like there's never enough like you, you're you have too much on your plate or that you can't, can't ask somebody for help um, and that's what we're going to go over today um, some of those things again like i said uh, being unprepared there are things you can do about uh, that about being unprepared um, for tax season. It's stressful enough already um, this time of year, but you add additional stress when you're not maintaining your books regularly. Um, your record keeping is very important uh, for your business. Um, managing, it will stop you from feeling overwhelmed if you're regularly reconciling your accounts. Um, and then if you're going to um, trainings or reaching out to a bookkeeper, professional bookkeeper or a CPA um, to understand the um, to understand the deadlines and what is necessary for your filings. Um, Lupe, if you'll go ahead and move to the next screen, I'll go ahead and go over some of those items um, that we're going to focus on today. You want to make sure that you're being proactive 
being proactive is going to eliminate that stress altogether. Um, like I said, uh, like I said before, this time of year is very stressful. It's the beginning of the year. These deadlines come up fast. You have 31 days to send out your 1099s, um, and that's the short time frame. But if you're prepared and you're uh, you're you're taking the proactive steps throughout the year, then you're going to be ready when January 1 hits, uh, and you're not going to be stressed out. A very important thing to do um, is to make sure that um, as a business owner, you are tracking your revenue, your expenses, your debt and assets um, of your business regularly, um, and that bank accounts are reconciled monthly. Uh, biggest thing is, is uh, or things that I've encountered is that uh, that cause additional stress is someone who comes January 1st and they have to issue 1099s, but they haven't been keeping up with their record keeping as they should. Um, you know, things fall behind. You're running your business. You had a lot of things going on. Um, so we understand that, but it's very important that you make sure that um, that your books are maintained um, and that you're reviewing and understanding your financial statements. Um, financial statements will help you understand your cash flow so that you can make smart financial decisions. Um, and you'll need those to acquire any secured loans. And of course, um, to file your taxes for your business. Um, if there is um, tax codes and bookkeeping needs vary based on the industry. So make sure you do consult a CPA or professional bookkeeper. Um, we're here uh, to help you as a, as, so as a bookkeeper myself, um, I maintain in, and help business owners maintain and record those uh, the, the record keeping um, in, so in software, uh, it's QuickBooks Online. We're Quick, I am QuickBooks Online certified. Um, so I use that software to help business owners track their revenue, expenses, debts, assets, et cetera, and reconcile their accounts every month as well. In addition to that, we also go through and um, review the financial statements with our clients so that they understand and what they're looking at so that they can better, make better decisions for their business. Um, <clears throat> CPA versus bookkeeper. Um, there are, I get this question a lot. <laughs> I get this question a lot as a bookkeeper if I'm a CPA. The answer is no. And that's because I'm a bookkeeper. Uh, and the role of a CPA as a small business owner, um, a CPA, or oh, sorry, so as a CPA, the key role is to provide financial advice. A bookkeeper is responsible for maintaining. Uh, organized records of the financial transactions for your business. The CPA will then analyze the books and offer an appropriate financial advice. Um, so just know that the role of the bookkeeper and the CPA complement each other, and we work together to ensure your company maintains a sound financial position in the long run. Great, are you ready for me to take over, Andrew? Yeah, I am. I'm going to go ahead and pass this on to Lupe, and she's going to go over some more um, information with you. Okay, so I am a CPA, and I'm also a certified tax coach. And what that means is I have additional training and education to help small business owners do tax planning. So as a CPA and tax preparer, um, you take a more historical approach. Um, you deal with more compliance and um, the tax preparation piece. So everything that Andrew just uh, talked about is, you know, getting your, your finances in order, your bookkeeping in order, so that you can file those taxes. And when you're filing those taxes, you're looking at a historical view. You're recording the things that already happened. And... You know, if you look at this chart, it shows the differences between a tax prep and tax planning. So by taking that reactive approach, which is the compliance piece, which is making sure that you're getting everything turned into the IRS, you're not falling behind on your um, tax uh, deadlines, and you're submitting everything on time for those things that already have happened. So that's that historical perspective. Right, that box of receipts. Here you are at the end of the year. You haven't done your bookkeeping. You know, you haven't reached out to a great bookkeeper like Andrew and his company and haven't had them clean up your books and show you what accounts are supposed to go in and, and what accounts they're not supposed to go in. 
And so um, here is the, oh my goodness, it's almost tax time. What do I do? Okay. So then you see your bookkeeper, you have your all your um, books cleaned up, your finances uh, ready for tax preparation. And then you go see your tax preparer or your CPA who prepares your taxes. So once you get that done, it's not over. So you're, you run your business every day, 24, hour, 24 hours, seven days a week, and taxes do not stop there. So what I do as a certified tax coach is I come in and I take you into moving from a reactive mindset into more proactive mindset. So as a tax coach, I'll look at things um, like entity structure. I'll look at uh, your plans for growth, your plans for succession. I'll look at your capital uh, investment in your company. Um, I'll look at your fi your personal finances and how those interact and 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 affect your your bottom line uh, for your tax liability. So planning involves um, a more in-depth look at your tax structure and your tax situation. So once you've done your your taxes, for example, for 2021, you know, you would come to someone like me and I would look over your tax situation and I look for things um, for mistakes, loopholes, and missed opportunities. And then um, I'll review your your entity structure and counsel you and offer financial advice as to what we can do so that next year, one, you're not scrambling, and two, you've got the proper business structure um, that will offer the least amount of ta a tax as legally possible. So I'll look at um, your set of circumstances, your concerns, your goals for your business. Um, I'll look at your individual needs. So this is where you know, hey, my uncle told me I needed to file as an LLC, and my aunt told me I needed to file as an S-Corp. This is where I take that step back, and I look at where you are, and I run the numbers. And I have um, the ability to talk with you and ask you certain questions that you may not have thought about before. You know, um, things that have to do with maybe your health insurance coverage, your retirement planning, who you support. Uh, equipment that you buy, uh, plans for growth in your company, how many different types of revenue streams do you have? Are you investing in real estate? Um, are you planning to invest in real estate? Are you planning to retire in the next three years? And if you are, who are you leaving your business to? Are you structured properly so that whoever you leave your business to isn't paying enormous amount of tax? So this is where we take that proactive consultative approach. So you don't just come see me once a year. I stay on with you and, and um, help review your books, create a tax plan for you, which is your roadmap. Think of it as a business plan from a tax perspective. So the CTC, the Certified Tax Coach, is monitoring your progress throughout, throughout the year. So you have, whether you do your books or you hire a professional bookkeeper to do your books, the added security is Having, having someone like me on board that reviews the bookkeeping, that reviews your bookkeeping, that answers those questions, that helps you along the way and may be able to connect you with other resources like financial planners, tax attorneys, actuaries, um, uh, commercial bankers. So we are the, or I would be your, your business coach. Right. I am there to to help answer any questions, um, continuous training uh, as tax laws change, as interpretations change, um, as your business structure changes, as your needs change. Then you have someone along the way there to take action as things are happening and not wait until next tax season to scramble and wonder if the decisions you made um, had any tax effect. I mean, and this could be something as simple as buying a vehicle. You know, should I buy a vehicle? Should I lease a vehicle? Should I rent a building or should I, um, you know, it, uh, purchase a building? Uh, so all of those things that that affect your bottom line or that affect your, your purse is what I help with. So what I do is I take, I like to show this 
illustration to my clients when uh, we first meet. And um, it's fairly simple, but it helps put things into perspective. So during an ordinary earnings tax cycle, you earn your money, you pay your tax, and you spend what's left. So with year-round consultative tax planning, what I teach you to do is how to earn your money, how to spend and save, and then pay tax on what's left over. Um, so it turns out, you know, when you do that, you're paying yourself first and then paying the IRS second. So your tax bill is a lot smaller. <clears throat> you don't normally get that when you go prepare your taxes. When you go prepare your taxes, you're scrambling to record what's already happening, what's, what has already happened. And a lot of times um, your tax preparer or CPA does not have the time to sit and explain to you what your decisions um, what the consequences of your business decisions are because they, they're they focusing on doing the tax prep. So um, what I do is I take the time to sit with you and explain to you what those tax, con what those decisions, um, what those tax consequences to those decisions are. Uh, I don't handle an enormous amount of tax prep clients. That is only a piece of what is involved in tax planning. So I have a little more time to sit with you and answer those questions and walk you through the process so that it becomes a little less painful as you're starting your business. So like Andrew said, there comes a time where you have to ask for some help and ask for professional help. And so that's what I um, would love to do is I like to work with startup businesses uh, my ideal client is a startup business within the first three years, and I help them um, look at their business structure again and make sure that they're falling in line and growing in the right direction. So, um, here we go. That's it. <laughs> Andrew? Yes. Sorry. Day, but I think going over specific questions that clients have and um, repeating them the way that they formulate the questions to us will help tie everything together. So do you want to go first and yeah. share some of the questions that you've, you've heard from your clients? Absolutely. One of the biggest questions I get uh, from potential clients and from just anyone that speak to in general uh, about bookkeeping is, do I need a CPA? And my answer to that question is, well, what is your goal you're trying to achieve? Um, because that depends. Um, there are different, like we explained earlier, the CPA versus the bookkeeper. There are a number of different roles in accounting, um, and each role is different and uh, um, responsible for different um, aspects of the accounting cycle. Um, so my answer is typically, no, you don't need a CPA if you're looking to just manage your daily transactions, do your bookkeeping, pay your bills, um, uh, ma uh, manage your incoming revenue, um, uh, and things like that. So it all is all what you, um, again, what the goal is that you need to achieve. Um, Lupe, what are um, some examples of times that when th that they would need a CPA versus a bookkeeper in th that you would give your suggestions? Well, I, I agree. Um, it, it, it's understanding what their goal, what their needs are. So I think a lot of times um, you don't know what to ask because you just you just know your pain points. So that's what I like about what you, you and I do is that we listen to the client's pain, pain points. And because we, we complement each other and we, we have that network that we can direct them where they need to go. So, so yeah, so if I have someone coming to me and then they need um, they haven't filed taxes for a few years, and I see that they they haven't done a great job of doing their bookkeeping. I'm going to direct them to someone like you because that's what your expertise is in. So that's the first pain point is getting organized, and I think that's the main. That's probably the focus word, right? Is getting being organized. Correct. Um, you know, you don't need the CPA to get to to get organized. Um, 
you know, sidebar, you're going to pay a lot more to a CPA to get you organized. So first things first is get organized and do you do that by utilizing the services of a trained, good bookkeeper. Absolutely. And then the next thing, and that kind of rolls into my next question that I get um, a lot, you know, what is a bookkeeper? Um, that's a very good question. What do I do? <laughs> so I, uh, myself and my team is responsible for um, recording those day-to-day -day transactions, your expenses, your, your, your income that you get from your sales, uh, making sure that everything is mapped properly in your books and set up in your chart of account. Um, so that way, when tax time does, uh, is here, you're prepared. And we go through and categorize all your transactions in your bank feed. Um, we can handle your accounts payable, your accounts receivable, expense management. Um, we even do, um, you know, consulting with, um, you know, best practices. Accounting software is just that, accounting software. You have to know how to use it. And so we are trained and certified in QuickBooks Online and um, know the ins and outs of it. Um, to, in order to guide you to the best practice for whatever that is that you're trying to achieve in your uh, financials. Um, and then we just keep that in order throughout the year. And so that way, when, like I said, tax season comes, your books are clean, you're ready to go, and you're not stressing out. Exactly. And so the second part to that is, so now, you're, now your books are clean. Now um, your taxes are filed. So here goes the next step is now you're looking for funding from a financial institution. Here's where here's where a CPA can come in to help. You know, you need financial statements. A CPA who is licensed to, um, uh, whose firm is licensed to produce those um, financial statements can help you. Um, we, are, we are not allowed to provide legal advice. So we focus on, um, for someone like me, who's also a certified tax coach, I focus on tax on the tax planning and tax compliance. So CPAs can, can specialize in different things. Um, they can focus on audit, they can focus on oil and gas, they can focus on different industries. So what I chose, what I've, I, and I've worked in several of those industries. I've worked in healthcare, I've worked in oil and gas, and I've worked in audit and IT for a, a very long time. So um, the, the additional certification that I have to work with uh, business owners is that certified tax coach certification. So why would you go to someone like me is now my taxes are filed. Now what do I do? Am I doing everything correctly? Right. Um, so when you come to me, I want to see your books that are clean. You know, I can help you more when your books are clean because that's what I'm going to be reviewing. You know, my piece is taking over where other advisors leave off. You know, I'm the next the next piece in the puzzle. So, you know, and that's, I answer questions like, one of the biggest questions that I get is, um, should I register as an LLC? Or what, what, I'm opening a business, what entity structure should I register as? Well, I don't know, it depends. So, what my role is, is to ask you more questions. Um, it's like you, when you're going to the doctor, you don't just walk into the doctor and say, you know, I have a pain on my side, doctor, um, give me this, this, uh, you know, prescription for this medicine. The doctor will sit there and ask you questions and then run tests to be able to diagnose exactly what that treatment plan is. So you can look at the tax plan as your treatment plan, right? I will not answer a question as a fly by night, you know, if, if I'm, you know, approached and said, you know, if someone asked me, you know, what business structure should I, should I be? You'll hear, it depends. You know, let's talk. Let's, let's talk about what your goals are. The same questions that your bookkeeper is going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, but now we're in phase, now we're in phase three, right? So phase one, you're a mess. Mm -hmm. Phase two, you've cleaned the mess up and you filed your taxes. Phase three is now I'm ready to take that next step, you know, and that's, and that's, that's where I come in. And that's, that's where that biggest question is answered, you know, is, is the entity structure piece. And then I help you think through the other pieces as a business, as a self-employed business owner, you know, you don't, you no longer have an employer that's providing you health insurance, that's providing you a retirement plan. 
that's providing you a savings plan, that's providing you life insurance. So those are the things that come in um, that are an added plus as a certified tax coach. And you have that audit protection security comfort level that I am a CPA. So I have that additional training and I have that additional licensure to take you to that next level. Perfect. Um, so I think that was, I think we've covered a lot today. Um, we've went through some important deadlines. Remember to get those 1099s completed uh, with that deadline coming up at the end of the month. Um, so um, Lupe, I think, um, you know, if, if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to either Lupe or myself. Um, you can comment um, in the, you know, ask your questions here in the comments or you can send us um, either of us a message and we'll be happy to, to discuss with you um, and find out what your needs are and, and give you the, the best advice that we can and guide you in the right direction. Okay, agreed. The, the worst thing I think you can do is, is just ignore it. You know, yeah. if you don't understand something, raise your hand and ask questions. This is why we're doing what we're doing is because we want to see our community be successful. Yes. You know, a lot of times businesses do not are not successful and they fail because we don't mm -hmm. raise our hand. We don't ask those questions. Ask those questions. That's what we're trained for. This is this this is our bed those that tax codes are bedtime uh leisure reading, at least for yeah. me. I don't know about <laughs> Andrew, I enjoy that. I enjoy Monday when I get my tax <laughs> update. So I'm doing what you don't want to do so that you can be able to focus on your business. Absolutely. So ask those questions. Perfect. Well, thank you for your time, everyone. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you um, and, and to, to assist you with any questions that you have. Have a great day. Have a great day. Happy tax season. Bye. Bye.